and maybe he can give you a little bit of an uh, of an upside as to what it's like to try to feed 31. And this is a small crew, this expedition, um, up to 46 people. Um, what it's like to do that three meals a day plus a middle of the night meal. Um, so I'm going to ask him to come on up here. Uh, Greg is is the head chef, and as I say, takes incredibly good care of us. And I think the thing that's fascinated me the most is he's given us a tour of, of not only the galley but the storage area is the amount of planning that's involved. That's Greg. I'm going to give him the mic, and uh, he can bring you a little bit up the curve on what's going on down in the galley. Where are you from, Greg? I am from Poland, seven years in Scotland, two years in Cyprus, so around the world. <laughs> On with this company, I am already seven years. Uh, previous hours ship was the Lone, Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. What Lone Ranger. How big was that compared to this ship? Uh, it was similar size. It was ten meters uh, shorter than the Falcon. And had similar principles that you were doing explorations. Yes. Uh, no. Yes. Just only it was no ROV on board. No ROV, which we don't have on yep. right now anyway. Right. So. How did you get into being a chef? Uh, my mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my mom poisoned me <laughs> to be a chef and, uh, and make happy people with the food. Yeah. And so, and then did you work in kitchens before you moved on boats or did you always knew, no, I want to go on boats? Yeah, my background is the uh, resort hotels, uh, cruise liners, uh, private yachts, uh, and now we have the research vessel. So you pretty much, you, you run, you said cruise lines, hotels, uh, private yachts, and now research vessel. Let's Yes. You, and we, you need to go into the military next, maybe. Maybe a submarine for you. That would be a good look, right? Uh, no, no, thank you. I need the windows. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, you were saying that you need the windows when you cook. Now, the galley is at or below water, water level. Uh, the galley is exactly on the water line. So uh, from time to time we are under the water, and from time to time we are up to the uh, water line. So we can see underneath, and we can see on the so water. The, yeah, exactly. But when we left Guam, it was really rough, and the captain he put up signs, little placards everywhere that said the uh, deck number three and deck number two portholes had to be closed. So we have special steel. Um, Flip down, uh, what would we call it? Bulkheads. Bulkheads, yeah. exactly. You and Peter said that when you're cooking, you don't really like that when that's closed. Oh, because we, we feel like in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get seasick? No. No, just Peter? Uh, I can't tell that to you. <laughs> Peter's the other chef who works with Greg. Peter's from Germany. He would be upset. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's like, I mean, I don't get seasick really, but the smell of propane um, or sometimes foods, that's something that sets me off. Is, are there certain things that you cook that set you off that you're like, when it's rough out, you won't cook? Uh, yes, when it's rough sea, we're not cooking much the seafood. No seafood? No seafood because of the smell, because of the taste, uh, make people a little bit... Seafood? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> seafood. <laughs> okay. Now, can you please hold up your hand? All right. So how many times have you cut yourself in a seaway? That finger. Why the thumb? Five, maybe six. <laughs> <laughs> um, Movement of the ship. Now, one of the things that you and I talked about when we were down doing a tour of the, the galley and the sto um, storage facilities is uh, waste management. And this is something that's we're going to be on this trip uh, approximately 22 days at sea, I believe, something like that. Um, how do you manage that? I mean, do you just go to the store beforehand, like, hey, Peter, what do you feel like for night 14? Pork chops? Let's go. And go to the, the store. How do you plan it in advance? Do you have all of your meals on a spreadsheet? Or is it how do you do this so that you're prepared to cook for 30 people for 22 days straight? How, how does that work for you? What's in, in the process there? Normally we defrost, uh, defrost the meat or fish for the next week for up to seven days, five up to seven days. 
And then we, we decide daily what we're going to cook or day before. It depends on the weather. Yeah. Uh, depends on the shift movement. Depends on the, how many people are on the night shift. Uh, it's a lot of, lots of things that what, what can change the menu. Uh, barbecue at night before. Uh, that's why they're changing the next day uh, menu for yeah. the lighter one. So there's a, a lot of things. So you guys are adjusting uh, the menu behind. not only to the number of people and how watches are working, which now we're um, five. We're, yeah, we've got the mapping going on. So I know in the middle of the night I eat a whole extra meal and that you guys put out. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> that chicken, I like the chicken on It's really good. Although I'm not an olives guy, so I had to pick the olives out. Um, but even going back further than that, do you use a distributor to uh, bring you all the food on board, or do you guys go out grocery shopping? No, we're using the uh, food chandler as the and they deliver us uh, for us the food on board, and uh, we are doing most of the stuff uh, the top up order. We we are calling that top up order. We're shopping daily for the stuff what is missing on the delivery, and the stuff what we can get on the smallest uh, packages uh, instead the big packages of the chandler. So what's food the, provider? Okay, what's the one thing that you won't go to see without being in your galley? What's the one thing that you're like, I have got to have this because it makes everything possible. As I am responsibility for all of the food and drinks on board, including tea and coffee. Yes, I will not go at sea without coffee. The uh, people will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Grab yours as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. cheers. cheers. <laughs> so, do you guys have any questions for Greg? How much salt do you go through? How much salt do you go through? That's a good question. How many? How many big, big things of salt? I can tell you in the pounds. It's around uh, 15 up to 20 pounds a month. And has that increased with me on board? Yes. <laughs> no. Okay, next question. Rod, can you get the salt out of the desal unit? Can you use the salt out of the desal, desal unit? Can you get it from the engineers rather than? Uh, no. They use chemicals. Remember that it's re reverse osmosis. So maybe at that first filtration you could get it, but um, at that then afterwards they're adding uh, they're adding a number All of the four steps. So. Yeah, there's four steps, and that fourth one they add certain chemicals. Like, and yeah, and the stuff copper and stuff. And Your question about that'd be kind of yeah, that's, that's a good one. Actually, actually, I need to talk with chief engineer about that. You can certainly make your own salt on board. I mean, just on the aft deck, there's enough. It's not point to buy the <laughs> sea salt in the in the shop. <laughs> Next question. What's your favorite thing to cook? What's your favorite thing to cook? Fish, fish, actually, whole seafood. There's the 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 freshest stuff what we can get around the uh, Pacific Islands. And of course, it's healthy, nice to cook. Now, we haven't and been doing any fishing off the back. We're going slower now. Do you oftentimes, when we're, uh, when we're going a little bit slower, do you have the boys fish off the back to get you some Yes, the, the deckhands are fishing uh, from time to time when we are slow, slower or when we are uh, on position to, for CTD or ROV. And sometimes we had on board already the huge mahi mahi or yellow fin tuna for fresh use in the galley. Now you were saying that over the last 25 years that you've worked in the kitchen, yellow fin tuna is one of the things that you've stopped seeing in the kitchen. Why is that? Uh, not that much how it was before. Uh, lots of fishermen are fishing for uh, tuna and looking uh, to get them to make some, some money. But you feel that do you think that there's anything with the way that they're fishing? Are they overfishing the yellowfin tuna? Is they overfishing? 
is I said on the internet the other day if you give you if you think about supply and demand uh, there was a big i tuna sold in japan for over six hundred thousand dollars one fish do you know how much per pound it was paid it looked to me it was about a 350 400 pound fish so do the arithmetic um and that's round that hasn't been gutted hasn't been had been taken off so they were paying whole fish you know when you're buying fish you're trying to buy it either gutted or filleted i'm sure because you're not paying for bones and and uh, stuff that way and uh but that gives you a sense as to how depleted the tuna fishery is. And actually, when we were in Guam, uh, right behind us were four and then five Japanese tuna boats, small ones, like 50, 55 foot. And it, you would have been blown away to see the quantity of whole fish that came off those those small boats. Uh, and, and they're going out weekly. And yeah, I mean, it's it's these were fish that, give you an idea, uh, were four or five feet long minimum. Um, and they filled pallet after pallet after pallet of them. So, you know, there's no question it's a fishery that has a lot of pressure on it. Now you, a question? Yep. Does having an international crew create a challenge for you as far as menu choices? Oh, great question. Uh, yes, we try to make happy. We try to make happy all our crew members and uh, uh, scientists uh, about the nationality about the food where, it, uh, where it's coming from for example we have on board uh, we have uh, in the company 13 or when i write 14 different nationalities so uh, that's a big challenge to make happy everyone with the with the food uh, but not on the same time of course <laughs> and it's working it's working a uh, little bit filipino food uh, Little bit Bulgarian food. Wait, so with Germans. the Filipinos, though, what's the one thing that always has to be out? There's one thing that I've noticed that is at every single meal. What is it? Rice. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. There's always, you guys, how many pounds of rice right through over the course of the trip? It would be a surprise. I bet it's, I mean, it's got to be hundreds of pounds. Around 100 pounds a month. <laughs> So how big of a hundred pounds? That's, that's like a bag. That's about bag size of you. I mean, because you only weigh a hundred pounds, right? <laughs> hundred pounds <laughs> in your dreams. <laughs> now, you guys have going back to the fish question. You actually have on board the ship a do not buy list. Is that correct? Yes, uh, we're not buying the we're not buying uh, octopus. We're not buying sharks. We're not buying whale. And no. it's some few fishes uh, on the list what uh, was strictly not buying and not using for cooking. Where do you, we, whale is not something that we see in the fish market at home. Um, in the Pacific, is this a normal thing to see? Uh, no, that's the, I think that's the most of the North, uh, North Sea uh, stuff, uh, close to Norwegia, Scandinavia. Okay. And we've been there as well and uh, on the market. Uh, next to the beef fillet, uh, uh, was standing always the we well, well, meat. And in the Pacific, do you see more shark though? Is there a lot of shark? Uh, it's the black market. Nobody, black market. Okay. nobody's selling on the on the market in the little island. I didn't saw yet, but uh, from time to time, I see on the list and from the uh, ship chandler. Interesting. Interesting. You guys have some other questions? Have you ever ran out of food? Have you ever ran out of food? Run out of food? <laughs> oh man! If I will run up uh, out of the food <laughs> on board, I will not standing here right now. <laughs> so no. <laughs> no, never, never. It's explain, Greg, the the fact that when we get into we arrive in a U.S. port, in particular after we've transited from a foreign port, if you have any food left, what are the regulatory requirements? Uh, so when we enter the U.S. port uh, from international water waters, uh, we need to have uh, the restriction. We need to have the fridge with the fresh fruit and veg uh, actually empty. We need to because the restriction is uh, we we cannot uh, we are not allowed to bring the fresh uh, fruit and veg from outside the U.S. In the U.S., uh, 
So what do you what do you do with the fruits and vegetables that uh, are left over when you arrive in a U.S. port? Actually, we need to calculate uh, the days exactly when we finish our uh, fruit and veg fridge. And uh, from on night, eighty percent are working quite well. Uh, we enter the port, and we have salad, fruit, and vegetables for the last meal and the empty fridge. Right. Um, excellent. Uh, any other quick questions for Greg before we let him go back to doing what he's doing? Have you had a fire in the galley? Have you, had a fire? Yeah. Have you ever had a fire in the galley? Uh, no, never. Greg, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you very much. What do you guys say? That was a surprise for me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job. We